All right, what is going down guys? Today we're gonna to be talking about a pretty important topic when it comes to shooting a wedding by yourself. Now, I'm gonna make making coffee during this and then we're gonna head into my office and talk about the gear I bring to a wedding when I am shooting by myself and some really critical tools I use when it comes down to that. So, sometimes as a wedding photographer or videographer, you're gonna get asked to shoot a wedding and they might have a lower budget or it might be a destination wedding or it might be a situation where you can't bring a second shooter. Now, it's actually really important as a photographer and videographer to be able to do that because you're gonna learn so much as a photographer videographer when you shoot a wedding by yourself. Now, if you come over here, I'm gonna, I can show you this cool coffee I'm making right now. Uh, we're making a latte as it's coming out. So yeah, I've shot many weddings by myself and it's grown me so much as a photographer and videographer. And when you're shooting an event by yourself, you're kind of becoming a multi-band musician where you have the drum on your back, you're feeling for the jingles and you're playing the harmonica at the same time. And I absolutely love doing that. It is so much fun and I love that pressure. Now I'm gonna start explaining this uh, when the sound is done because I'm sure it's so loud for you guys. All right, we're almost done this latte. Turn that off. All right, so let's dive into this video. Now today we're talking about how to shoot a wedding by yourself. Now that might bring a lot of anxiety to you as an individual when it comes to being a photographer or videographer. I know when I first shot my first wedding, I had a second shooter. Uh, I wish I hired a third videographer in my head prior to the event. Like I was really having all these anxious thoughts that what if something goes wrong? Uh, what if Spencer's camera goes down? And all these things go through my head. But I want, I want to show you guys how I shoot weddings by myself and how I protect myself from what if a camera goes down or what if something goes wrong and how I clear all that up. So uh, tomorrow I am shooting a wedding by myself as a videographer. I'm not shooting the photos, so I won't be bringing a second videographer. And when it comes to doing that, I set up a lot of gear I don't just bring one camera because what if your main camera goes down? Something goes down, the camera battery poops on you, uh, something, the, the shutter goes down on you. I've had this actually happen to me at a wedding before where the shutter went down during the ceremony right after she came down the aisle. And if you are not prepared for that as a wedding professional, uh, I wouldn't call you a wedding professional in a way because that is such a key part to the job is having the tools in place that if something goes wrong, you have a plan B. So I'm gonna tell you guys how I prepare for you know the worst thing that happens and how I shoot weddings by myself. So you're gonna see me tomorrow. I'm gonna to go pro the whole day. You're gonna see how I'm shooting the wedding day, how I'm setting up all my gear. And before we do that, I'm gonna show you all the gear that I bring to a wedding. So right now, the camera that's shooting right now is a D750. It's one of my main cameras. Uh, and I bring a ton of cameras. So here's one camera, here's Another camera, I shoot with mainly D750s, and then my awesome friend Curtis right now is filming on a Fuji X-T2. I'm sure I'll hold it for a second. Um, this is my main secondary camera, but sometimes becomes my main camera. And behind here, I'm shooting a lot of the moving shots on this gimbal with this camera on it. So when I get to the venue, I can do a nice establishing shot with this gimbal, it's nice and smooth. Uh, this autofocus beautifully for the entire ceremony when she's coming down the aisle it's on this gimbal as i'm backing up and then during the whole ceremony i put this down on the ground and then i shoot beautiful video with my other cameras with my long lenses and the other things i'm about to show you so usually i'm always holding two cameras at once so when she's coming down the aisle this is how i get two shots at the same time now not many photographers or videographers do this um, i'll be holding the gimbal with that fuji camera on this while holding this camera to my eye and walking down the aisle with her. Now to even get a step further, I'll put this camera pointed at the groom and I'll hold this camera towards the bride. And now you're actually gonna see me do that tomorrow because I'm gonna be shooting with my Fuji, uh, just getting the first look of the groom and then this showing the bride walking down the aisle. And then after I get about like 10 seconds of that, when she enters the, the tip of the aisle, then I'm gonna go right to her and walk behind and capture all those moments. Now, a lot of people are, might ask, hey Jeremy, why are you shooting with two in one hand? What if this isn't auto-focusing well or the settings are off? Well, I'm always looking at both LCDs so I can check on the settings. And because the Fuji X-T2 is so good at auto-focusing and many mirrorless cameras are like this, 
uh, that I know if I have this camera pointed at her and I'm shooting um, on that Fuji with a 18, 18 to 55 millimeter lens. So it's nice and wide shooting at 18. It autofocuses so quickly and it's just impeccable. So even there, me standing by myself, I'm gonna have two angles when she's walked down the aisle and that's so important. Uh, secondarily, when the ceremony starts and you know, the father gives the bride away, I'll, I'll plant this right, maybe five meters behind the bride and groom, pointed at them, a nice, beautiful, medium wide shot. It's only a foot and a half off the ground, so the photographer is not gonna be upset at you, but usually I'm always shooting the wedding photo and video by myself, so I don't have to worry about the photographer since I am the photographer. And then I'll take my main D750 and I'll pop on my 70 to 200 and get as many beautiful medium close, medium wide shots, medium close ups uh, with this camera as possible. So that's gonna be candid moments of the bride, candid moments of the groom. And this is the time I try to get as much video of the parents on both sides, some guests, all each groomsman and each bridesmaid. I try to get a nice candid moment of each one. And I do this all before the vows. Now I do this all before the vows because I want uh, to have enough beautiful videography for the highlight film before I have to do my job, which is capturing constant footage of the vows. Now when the constant footage of the vows are coming, I'll zoom in at 7200, hold my camera, and I am now a tripod. So I'll do nice, beautiful video of the bride talking about her vows and all that, and then I'll switch to the groom's side and then I'll do that, and then for the first kiss, I'll do that, all while I'm kind of doing a 360 degrees around the ceremony. Now, this is a lot of fun, but for some people, this might be a little too close, and some people might not like that. And in addition, while I'm doing my rounds, I'll ensure that this camera is still rolling, because it buffers every 15 minutes, so that's really important to note. Um, now, the main part of the video I was talking about was how to protect yourself just in case if this camera goes down or this one. So I set up two tripods with other D750s with 18 to 55 millimeter lenses or 24 to 70s. And I make sure those are rolling before the ceremony starts. So just in case if I die, if I get a heart attack, there's two tripods there getting amazing footage. So now that's four cameras. Now to go a step above, if you see this, this is magical. So a lot of the times uh, during ceremonies, there'll be a gazebo uh, around the client and I'll actually hook this up to the gazebo and I will hide a GoPro um, to this. And this is an amazing way to get a beautiful shot that's close up to the bride and groom. Uh, you can kind of see all the guests in the background without being intrusive like a tripod would. A tripods are great, but they're very intrusive. And secondary, I will also have another GoPro that I'll hide in the grass or on the ground on a little gorilla pod, uh, which is another angle that's nice to, to go to. Now, this is only for the raw footage that I deliver to them, where I edit all these six angles into one beautiful ceremony, one beautiful first dance. I would never put GoPro footage actually in the wedding film. Maybe 1% of the time I'll use the, the one in the gazebo shot, but rarely will I ever. But this is when I'm delivering constant footage of ceremony, first dances, speeches, that I set up all these six cameras and just in case something goes wrong. So that is what? One, two, three, four, five, six cameras out capturing constant video of the entire ceremony. While I'm getting the creative stuff, these are all getting the boring stuff. Now, another key component when it comes to backing up uh, audio uh, is you need a lot of audio sources. So I have these Rode mics that I stick on my tripod cameras. And for my Fuji X-T2 and my Nikon D750, I actually don't have a microphone on it because it adds weight and I'm gonna sync up with the better audio sources. And then the most important part when it comes to audio because I never actually use the audio from my Rode mic unless I have to, is I use a bunch of lav micro mics. So this is a Rode Zoom one. I have two of them. One I'm actually using right now that you can see is mic'd up, sounds crisp. I always put this on the groom or the officiant, preferably the groom. Now 90% of the time I do. And secondary, whenever there is audio I can mic into, this is my saving grace. So I will mic this into the, the DJ's audio source or the, whatever mixing boards there. 
and I have a bunch of chords in here and I'll make a separate video of what do you do with, in random cases when you can't tap into audio. Um, this one goes into an RCA split, so I can go to the DJ mixer table and be like, all right, those are the two chords, put it, plug it in. I can listen to it, he'll probably check his mic, uh, be friendly with the DJ as always, because you're a rock star, you're nice to everyone. And then uh, that's gonna capture all the beautiful audio from the microphone. And then secondary, you're gonna have a beautiful mic on the groom that's gonna capture that. So those are my main two sources. I'll have both of those sources going at the same time during a ceremony, because sometimes they actually bring down the mic when you know uh, they're coming down the aisle. And maybe I'll put in 20% of the road mic. These feelings and, emo and emotions I have for you will never change. From the bottom of my heart, I promise you a wonderful life respecting your every decision. Our beginning is never ending. It's only getting started. Uh, just for ambience, uh, for like raw footage or something, whenever I'm delivering that constant footage. But you can see that's like five sources of audio right there. And you could go overboard and do more uh, zoom ones, hiding around. Um, sometimes I'll, wherever I put this, I'll actually hide a lav mic with it, uh, with a zoom H1. All depends on the situation. Uh, but with that many audio sources, I feel pretty safe. I feel pretty backed up. Some videographers like to go overboard and do more Zoom H1s. Whatever you're comfortable with, you can do that. Now I'll link all the products here in the description for you guys to check out. So you will see in the raw footage tomorrow of the GoPro behind the scenes, how I utilize all the tripods, where I set them up. Uh, the two tripods I usually like to have, one big wide shot at the back. So when she comes into the aisle, I'm at the front of the aisle then this is my, my other camera. So these tripods are replacing my second videographer. That is the goal. Um, so I'm trying to ease you guys into the idea that if you have two tripods, a nice gimbal, one in your hand, all these audio sources, you don't have to be reliant on thinking, oh my goodness, I need this second videographer. So I hope some of these tips helped you guys out. Uh, shooting weddings are so much fun and I hope you guys go out there and make an impact to your clients and deliver awesome wedding videos. And if I can help you create a better video, that is the goal. So I will see you guys in the next video.